everybody. Welcome. We're going to do a little special edition of Roll or Die today. It's not a numbered episode, but we are very lucky to have, well, two of Australia's greatest grapplers right now, in my mind at least. Uh, we have the amazing Nikki Lloyd Griffiths. I believe that's your name. Is that correct, Nikki? Yeah. <laughs> cool. And Cooper Burnham. Pretty sure I got his name right as well. And these guys are just, I mean, if you didn't see them on BOA, you need to find that stream and you need to watch what happened because they really did, they fought their heart out and uh, and also the odds were against them. Like there was a, a husband and wife in this competition. I'm sure they came into this competition, seasoned grapplers going, honey, one of us is going to be winning at least 5K tonight. We're probably going home with 10K. And then these people who've come up through the ranks recently in, in, in the Melbourne grappling scene just really, you know, Gave them a different outcome and they both went home with their tail between their legs, even though they're both lovely. Hi, Hope and Ariel. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the show, guys. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Cooper, can we start with you? Um, so you got your black belt about three weeks before the BOA event, yeah? So yeah. if you don't mind me saying, I guess it's fair to say you were probably the underdog. Yeah. And uh, how did that feel for you going in, like as a brand new black belt? against some pretty seasoned black belts, yeah? Yeah, so I I had been black belt for like, I think it was two weeks. So actually, I felt less pressure because I thought, ah, like I'm not expected to win this. Like I'm the underdog here. And to be honest, going into it, I kind of thought I'll I'll be happy to win one match. That's how I thought. I was like, if I go in there, win my first match, sure sure, I'm not a chump. I'll be like, I'm I'm sweet, yeah? And then um, like the, the way in, Lachlan Conway, he chose me and um, I was like, oh, like he thinks I'm the underdog too. Like he's chosen me like first up. So I didn't mind either because like I was, I'm, com- like, I'm confident in myself. I, I know like I hate to lose. So I thought if they're going to beat me, it's going to be hard for them to beat me. Um, and yeah, I went in there, just, I just wanted to do my best. And then I ended up winning the whole thing, which was crazy. <laughs> I still can't believe it. Maybe. So did you guys get to – did people get to choose their opponents? I thought they were drawn out of hats. So what it was was there was four quarters and then they would pull a name out of the hat. So I was drawn out first. I stand in one of the quarters. Now the next person, they can go into another quarter or they can choose to fight me. So oh. Lachlan chose to go against me. He was drawn out third. And then Nikki chose to go against April in the late – I think you were drawn out sixth maybe, Nikki. Yeah, late. After five, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah you were like quite late, so there wasn't really much option. You had to choose someone. Uh, yeah, I think it was her or Yasmin, maybe. I don't remember. Yeah. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And what was the, what was the like, that, that whole kind of choosing process? What is that like? Like, is it a stressful situation or is it friendly at this time? Like, what are people, what's, the, ment- what's the, the, the kind of mental state of people in this section of the comp? Uh, well, for me, anyway, I um, have trained, like, for a long, long time with Hope. So my whole goal was don't get Hope in the first round. Because <laughs> yeah. we are such good friends. We've trained together for, like, two, three years. So I just didn't want her to – I really thought I'd lose in the first round wow. if I got her. Did you, yeah. did you see Hope as someone who, if you go up against her, you're going to lose? Or, like, is, or is it, like, is it quite close between you two and it goes back and forth? Like, did you back yourself against Hope? I don't back myself at all, no. Uh, I think that I have the ability to maybe catch her every now and then. Yeah. But in the training room, she destroys me. And I, you know, how right. can I think I'm going to beat someone who destroys me every day? Amazing. Um, wow, that just makes it even more of it. Even- <laughs> Nikki, with that sort of in mind, what was going through your head then, leading, like coming into the final when it was you against her? So I guess from your point of view, that's as good as it could get. Yeah, you've, you've not had her first round, not had her second round but you've got yeah. her in the final. so I mean, everything you... was going my way on the day. Like, you know, I didn't have her until the final, no matter what, if I did make it there. And then I do make it eventually to the final. And I think as long as, you know, I was happy at that point. I made it to the final. Um, and I thought, I just got to stick to my game plan, which did not work at all. <laughs> I wanted to avoid so many things that happened in the match. So nothing really worked how I thought it was going to work on the day. Yeah. 
But hey, you got the win, and actually, you got three subs. So if if that was a game plan that didn't work, um, <laughs> what, what, what's a game plan that works then? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think when we're just like avoid sitting on your butt with hope because she will out pummel you and follow you. And mm. so I don't know. Maybe my training paid off. Maybe I got lucky. I, yeah. I think on that as well, Nikki. We both kind of had the same mentality. Now that you say that, because. I was happy to be against the final, but like Ari, he's a well-seasoned black belt, just like what Hope mm-hmm. is. So I felt kind of the same, like, oh, I'm happy to be here and against against the Ari, you know, I'm just happy to be here in the final. So I, to be honest, I didn't expect to beat him either. Like I thought he was going to probably, I, I didn't know how he was going to win, but I was definitely th- feeling the same way as you, I reckon. Mm. Yeah, if you're just happy, you got nothing to lose. We're both like, you know, I know you just got your black, but like, They've been black so much longer. So I feel yeah. if I lose now, my team can't say you suck. <laughs> you know, because I at least made it this far. And so I was happy with that. Absolutely. And with you, Coops, actually on that note against Ari, like how do you deal with a guard like that? Like what's the what's the what do you what do you do? Yeah, it was quite funny, I think, because in the final it was like the guard oh, pass up versus sorry, like, sorry. The guard. Can you have his dog here today? And guys, appreciate how cute he is. Oh, wow. Well, really. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Cooper. Sorry. Sorry. No, <laughs> um, no so uh, what I was saying is it's um, it was funny to be in the final, like the guard passer versus the guard play- player. So yeah. it was like almost like the perfect matchup, but he's really like flexible. So going in there, I was like, I know he like he's good at taking the back and he's really flexible. So I wasn't gonna rush him. You know, I like I think I always thought he was the type of guy to capitalize off like mistakes. So that's why I was like, there's five grand on the line, like I'm not gonna try and rush this and I was happy just to play the slow game. And then before I knew it, like eight minutes had gone and I was like, Oh wow, like like I've made it this far, like I'm doing right. So I just gotta keep this pressure. So that's mm. kinda how I thought about it. So does that mean you yeah. felt like you were actually improving the position? Because it, I mean, it was a lot of back and forth. His guard is just unbelievable, and so is your attack. But it felt, it looks like an, a fairly equal position. But did you feel like your pressure was slowly breaking him down in some way? Is that what you're saying? Uh, so I'd say that, like, there wasn't a lot happening, but there was enough to get me the win because I think I was the one forcing the game. And as well, like, Ari's more of a gi player mm-hmm. so i think he found he even said in his pose like it was hard for him to engage and also i was not making it easy like i was passing when i want to pass but also when he was attacking me i was quite um like cautious and not letting him get too deep on things so yeah i think he was more of like a counter fighter and i wasn't just gonna rush in like what like someone else might just rush in and then get yeah. caught so i didn't want to risk that so i was just putting enough pressure and then hoping to capitalize off maybe a mistake he made and like that's how i ended up passing him was I just came to one side and I did kind of like a modified leg drag and drop straight to side control. Um, yeah. So that's what I mean. Awesome. Yeah. And what's it, what's it like out there? Like with all the crowd, the lights and everything like Nikki, how did you deal with that? Do you hear that? Do you feel that? Or is Especially, it, you can block it out. Is it just like a normal compressed introvert, yeah. which is what you just find yourself as. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm super introverted so even like today doing this is nerve-wracking and normally at least at competition I know there's seven other mats that everyone is looking at yeah but I guess I don't know on the day I felt like I had one of my on days and I ignored every single person in the crowd and just thought they weren't there mm. and even though I could hear my team screaming at me and like I could hear everyone for some reason I didn't notice it when I was fighting which mm. was pretty good for me yeah. Does that mean How about you- for you, Cooper? Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, just, I was just going to say, does that mean you weren't really taking team coaching as well? Like you were fighting your own match without, or were you able to filter out the coaching? I was, I was trying to listen, but I couldn't quite hear. I mean, I heard a few things my coach said, mm. um, but I couldn't hear most of it because I already like can't hear half the things that are happening around me, um, let alone when everyone's screaming and there's like, you know, a lot of chaos. Yeah. But lucky, yeah, I, I did hear him when, like, in my final, just something stupid, like, push her leg off your hip. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then I start getting a pass. And I'm like, oh, lucky I can hear him now. Cause, yeah. yeah. How about you, Cooper? How was it for you being up there on the big stage? 
So I was quite nervous leading into it because I'd never been on like a big stage event. Same thing as like Nikki, like when you go to a comp, you know, there's like seven other mat mats running. So mm. no one's looking at you. But when you go on a live stream event where everyone's looking at you, I was a bit nervous for that. But then like once I got there, I saw it. And then like, I don't know, I, I kind of pump myself up before competitions, get myself pretty ready to go. So I don't feel like nervous or anything. So once I kind of got out there, I was pretty pumped up and ready to go. And then from like years of competing, when I compete, I pretty much filter out all noise except for relevant people's voices. So like I had my dad in my corner. So I heard most pretty much everything my dad said, I heard no matter how much screaming there was. And even like sometimes like, Thiago couldn't resist and just like yell out like one word or something here and there, <laughs> just yeah. like biting his tongue. But I always hear like, hair. Thiago, like that. Was it like <laughs> Yeah, he, he wasn't like allowed. So he was like sitting there, but sometimes he'd like yell out a word here and there. And I'd always, I'd hear his voice like instantly, no matter what. Um, so I kind of filter out and I just hear whatever voices I need to hear. So pretty much everything my dad said, I heard. Um, and when I was actually in the matches, I was pretty composed. So it didn't actually bother me once I was there. That's an interesting point, actually. So you got your dad, who's a purple belt, in your corner, yeah. and it's like I, I'm often fascinated with the whole cornering concept because you've got someone who's obviously way less experienced. He's like my age, you know. He's like just doesn't compete, and yet he's able to provide valuable cornering to you. So how does that all work? Well, like people see like my dad that oh he's been training for this amount of time or whatever, but like. He's been to every comp I've ever done since I was like 12. Mm -hmm. So when my coaches weren't there to corner me, like it was my dad. The amount of comps my dad's cornered me is like an insane amount. And I think like, of course, he doesn't know my game like perfectly because like I'm a, I'm a black belt. You know, I've been doing it much longer, but he can yell out. I find he yells out really relevant things at different mm -hmm. parts. And also he just like, he knows like what to yell out during a comp. Like, mm -hmm. oh, hold on. Like even I had, Lachlan's back and I didn't have it very securely and he's like oh head to the other side so I did it like I have I have 100% faith in what my dad says and wow. like before he started jiu-jitsu he watched jiu-jitsu for like five years he was always like telling me how to do moves like he's the type of guy like if he's watching me do a technique on the mat he can like tell me what I'm doing wrong wow. because he just watched so much um so yeah That's after cool. Tiago I'd have probably my dad in my corner because he just knows my game knows what to yell out um yeah he's a good corner Brilliant, man. Thanks. Speaking of corners, so obviously the event was in Melbourne and Nikki, you're from Immersion and you had one Immersion coach and then Hope being from Sydney, she had the other Immersion coach in her corner. <laughs> like, how was that? Yeah. Can I ask? Um, so I, I already assumed, because I train mainly with Lee Ting, so I always train at Ringwood and then I get to Glen Waverley when I can. So um, rolling with Tingy so much, I, you know, got him in my corner because he knows everything that I do. Um, and so when I knew, I knew, I already knew that uh, Minnie would be in Herb's corner and I knew he would never say anything too valuable against my guard or anything like that. So I felt safe knowing that, you know, as much as he's going to say things, um, trusting in him that he's not going to just um, tell her exactly how to, to go against me. And she already knows anyway. I yeah. mean, we trained consistently for probably over two years. She already knows all the things I'm gonna do. She already knows what guard I like. So I don't think I don't think there would have been anything that would have been too valuable to that would have been said. Hmm. Yeah. Is it is is it hard beating like a really close friend over a, a five thousand dollar amount in a big comp? Is that is it not a hard does that make it easier or harder? It was harder just because I assumed it would be her. Okay. Um, yeah. the whole time I'm like, ah, she's just gonna win and I knew that like my best shot was to do something like a sub mm. to just get a sub at the last second um because that's like more my style but um no we're really good friends and like we spoke afterwards and she's so happy for me um you know she's hugging me and she's part of immersion so she came and she took photos and she's a good sport so right couldn't ask for like a better friend with her yeah she's yeah. good brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. and uh, I guess what's next for you guys? That's a pretty um, pretty big big event, Bola. It's been, what, three years since there's been anything like that. Obviously, the last two years has been uh, pretty difficult to have events, but um, what's a future hold? What what are your future plans for comps and things like that coming up? Oh, for me, anyway, I got Worlds. Is, Cooper, are you going to Worlds this year? When, when is it? Is it in June? Uh, June, I want to say 1st to 5th of June. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go to it. I wasn't even sure if it was on. Um, I was yeah. another thing I want to do ADCC trials as well. Um, yeah. most likely I'll do worlds, yeah, yeah, but, but then I guess I don't, you'd have to get your points in time, which I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd get the points either. I'd have to like see some yeah. like open nearby and try and just go and win you'd have that. To fly somewhere, yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know, but mainly I was focusing on the ADCC trials because I just yeah. wanted to do that. We actually have a trials in here in um, Australia, which is cool. Um, yeah. Other than that, yeah, just any of the big ones, um, maybe world as well. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, nice. Vicky, you going to ADCC trials as well? Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to go in uh, over seventy, no, over sixty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We know. So that- we know- I'm oh, sorry, sorry, I cut you off. Can- I was just going to say that's a that's a nogi tournament. Like, are you you're not a big fan of nogi, or how do, how do you feel about gi versus nogi? I mean, it's not as fun for me. I find that I love like a lot of grips, so it's not as fun. But it's such a good opportunity that I can't say no to to even just try. I've mm-hmm. never done a trials before, so I've still been doing nogi this whole time. You know, so I'm trying to get better at my wrestling. I'm trying to get better at leg locks, and then. Might as well just try. <laughs> well, uh, because Cooper's like part of the furniture on this show, he's been on a few times, I think, already, but we don't, you know, you're like a, a unicorn for us. So, like, <laughs> how, did, how did you discover Jiu Jitsu? Because obviously, you, you, you have made it to this position of being like a, an elite grappler in quite a short period of time, I would say. You know, so, mm-hmm. like, yeah, just what's a little bit of the story of how you got in or discovered Jiu Jitsu and. Yeah. Uh, like the pretty basic story is um, I had a partner who watched UFC and he showed me Ronda Rousey and I had no interest in watching men. And as soon as she was getting her first fight in the UFC, I was kind of interested. And then he had been looking up jujitsu gyms, like, but never going. Mm-hmm. And he had looked up <laughs> a gym in Paran because I was living in Satya and he looked up 10th Planet and he was going to go to one of them. And then one day I just walked into the gym in Paran down the road and was like, oh, I want to do judo. And they were like, come in, come in, do jiu-jitsu. And then I did it and I didn't stop. Wow. I did it every day for a week. And then I um, signed up or whatever and had a gi and didn't stop. And so that was absolute, not not 10th. No, that was, um, no, I went into a Carlson, a Ben Hall Carlson Gracie in Paran. Oh, yeah, on Chapel Street. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, so I was training there for maybe like a year. Okay. What year was that, Nikki? I want to say 2014. Might have been the oh, end wow. of 2013. Yeah. Wow. So I've been so training think, on this. That's crazy. Yeah. I think I'd be at like eight years maybe now. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. Because I was in my 20s. You started like in the womb, <laughs> Cooper. So, you know. <laughs> and what, what age did you start to just see Cooper? Uh, I, was, I was 12. So I, but I started oh, yeah, so in 2012. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well. Anton, let's just yeah. uh, leave the conversation now, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're old enough to be your parents, both of us. Um, yeah, so but you guys are both pretty much like, I guess you'd say, semi-professional jiu-jitsu people, yeah? Like that, it's like your job, would you say? Like you, you train jiu-jitsu well, and coach I mean, jiu-jitsu as a job? Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I teach classes here. I teach classes at Salmon. I do private lessons. So yeah. pretty much full time jujitsu. Yeah. So do you think like is there that I don't remember there being much of that when I started? Like I've been doing it for more than ten years. There wasn't a lot of people like yourselves. It was pretty much just coaches and then hobbyists. So do you think yeah. that this is probably the future? Like there is opportunity for people like yourselves now to come up, or is it a real grind? Is it like just better off to stay grind. with? with just being as a hobbyist and doing it kind of part-time and stuff. But then, you know, like it's kind of hard to get to the level that you guys are at in terms of competitions when you're only training like occasionally, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can get to a high level without training, without throwing yourself in every day. Mm. But like I still had to grind the whole time. There was times I was in positions where I could just train twice a day and not work. But then there's other times like, you know, I need to work three, four days a week. And then I'm going to the gym at six in the morning at seven o'clock at night and just, you know, grinding it out. Mm, yeah. So it's taken a long time to get to the point. Like even now I still work the occasional part-time job um, just to be able to go overseas and do everything that I want to do. Yeah. What about like yeah. being, being a coach and being a grappler? Is that an advantage or is that a disadvantage? Like I, 
a Craig Jones type person might say, no, you just got to train and your coaching is going to distract you. But obviously you've got, we've got two coaching and grapplers here who have done something pretty amazing. So, so what's your guys' view on does coaching in, in improve you as a grappler or, or is it a distraction? I think coaching is, yeah, it's really, really good for your grappling because like, let's say, like I work on the desk, yeah, and I think about doing desk things. But if I'm coaching in that time, like I'm going to be thinking about jujitsu. Someone asks me a question, you've got to think about like how to answer it. Uh, for me, like anytime you're doing jujitsu, you're getting better at jujitsu. Mm. So I think even coaching is in that as well. As long as you're not like replacing like your training time with coaching time, I just think coaching is always going to help. Like I think for me, like doing private classes makes me learn so much about my game because mm. people would ask me questions like, oh, how do you, you pass in this way? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I need to think about it. So then I do it on them, do it on them and then be like, okay, I do this. So I think coaching made me realize a lot about my game. And I think, like I said, just doing jujitsu in general, whether it's coaching or rolling, it's just going to get you better. What about you, Nikki? I think the exact same because I think my muscle memory just goes on what I do in jujitsu. People say, where do you put your hand? And I'm like, no, I have to do a rep to see actually what the hell I'm doing here. My body's just doing it on autopilot. Mm. Um, so I learn like a lot. But like, yeah, as you said, if, if you start coaching instead of training, then, you know, it's not going to work out either. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like some people said to me, or like that when I fought Lachlan Conway, he pulled guard and I like, I landed straight into side control. And, like, everyone was like, wow, that was, like, a really good pass. But, like, when I did it in the moment, I was like, oh, my God, how the hell did I do that? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. And that was the same thing, like, muscle memory, just, like, yeah. you, like I blinked and I was inside control. No, I didn't. you do that. As observers, we've seen you do that 100 times in comp, you know, but to you, <laughs> it's an, an automatic movement, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's pretty much it, yeah. Unless do you guys have anything more to add if you... Got any final parting thoughts that you wanted to share with our listeners? And what are you doing with the 5K? <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm For me, I'm going to buy a ticket to uh, Worlds, so I'll go to America. Right. And then maybe another ticket somewhere else. Like, I don't know. I might, I don't know where I'm going to go. I need to see the calendar and, and yeah. So pretty much just straight back into Jiu-Jitsu. You're amazing. Yep. What are you going to do with the money? Probably, probably same. I've stuck it straight in my savings, just for it, ready for competitions. Like, you know what it's like. It's hard to save some money and train and fit everything yeah. in. So, five k's quite a big help. So, yeah, it's just gone into savings, ready nice. to be used on whatever comps I need to do. Uh, yeah. Same. I might have also bought a, a MacBook as well. <laughs> I might have. <laughs> then, then, like the day after, I went straight to the store and bought a new computer. <laughs> Right. Funny, I, funny, I actually thought the same thing. I was like, do you know, I have really oh, yeah. computer. I thought about getting a MacBook as well. So. Yeah. Well, because mine was broken and I was thinking, you know what? I never, ever spend money on myself. I'm always just like spending it on jiu-jitsu. So yeah. stuff it. That is really the mind. I've just finished reading a book called Relentless. And it is like all of that. Like the mind of an elite athlete is just, it's never enough. Or elite business person or whatever. It's just never enough. And like, that's obvious and it's very apparent in you too. Like all you can think about with your money is how can I get to the next thing? You know, it's not, yeah, it's, it's really admirable. It's, it's powerful. Thanks so much for being on the show, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> we'll have this out uh, hopefully soon. And if you guys could share it on your um, social medias, that would really help us grow our audience because I'm sure we've got lots of followers. And yeah, thank you again. Congratulations on the BOA wins. And um, yeah, you. we'll see you on the mats. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Peace out. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.